What up, family? It's your boy SNTV, man. Coming back at y'all with a quick little video. Before I start the video, I would like to ask y'all to hit that like button and make sure that y'all gently tap that subscribe button. That's right, y'all. We're trying to make it to 300,000 after that 500. Then we're going to a million, man. With that being said, straight to the video. Okay. I feel like this video is very vital, man, to the, um, to the hood, man, to the streets. Not just to the streets, man, to the kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, in a black community, we've always, um, for some strange reason, some of us know better than others, but that's a different, you know, that's a whole different video. We've kind of, um, got, we've kind of landed under the stigma and we're very comfortable with this, that being the biggest hardcore killer or a gangster is cool. Like, this is the thing to be. This is the thing to do. Um, this is the lifestyle to live. And in our actuality, that is the furthest thing from what we should be doing, from what we should be learning as possible. Like, it gets no worse than that. Um, the neighborhood criminal, the neighborhood killer is the lowest of the lowest. You know what I'm saying? You at the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of the totem pole. But, again, um we you know we aren't taught that it's not looked at like that you know in the um in, in certain people's eyes it's looked at as you know it's it's a messed up thing but in the city of chicago man a lot of other cities it's like this is what's up you know what i'm saying uh the ladies love these guys the killers um these these guys are looked up to people listen to these guys these guys are like the neighborhood heroes you know what i'm saying and this is whether they bringing money to the table or not um First and foremost, y'all, a killer puts himself at a disadvantage. For one, you take away the element of surprise. What do you mean, SATV? The element of surprise. When a person is dealing with you, especially in the streets, the ideal mindset that you want a person to think about you is he ain't on shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 48 Laws of Power, uh, number 21. Seem dumber than your mark. Play a sucker to catch a sucker. What that means is if anything happens or if I'm looking at somebody and I'm thinking that, oh, he ain't on shit, you know what I'm saying? I could just rob him or I could just do what I want to do to him. I could just treat him any kind of way. Nine times out of ten, he'll be less likely to really just do that to you off the, you know, off the bat versus Someone who he knows a killer, someone who he knows get out, someone who he knows is not going to play. He's not going to even risk it. Either he's not going to even pull it or he's going to pull up correct. You know how the old saying goes, oh, he should have came correct. He going to come correct every time because he know if he don't come correct, it's over with for him. So you want people in the streets to look at you like, oh, I'm a goofy. Little do they know the whole time if you play with me, you going on that shirt. I got a couple examples of exactly what I'm talking about, different stories. I'm going to run through these kind of quick, so I'm going to need y'all to listen kind of quick. You know, everybody knows about uh, Lil B, EBT, um, STL Lil B. Y'all know that Lil B wasn't nothing to play with. Um, Lil B actually was killed because not only was guys in the street scared of Lil B, but the police was scared of Lil B. You know what I'm saying? Um, according to a whole lot of people that came up with Lil B, he was like the neighborhood Debo, all right? And every time the police seen him, they would try to get him. You know, they would chase him and stuff like that. And they knew not to play with Lil B. Lil B had a warrant for a body. So the police was trying to get Lil B. When Lil B ended up being killed, him supposedly having that gun on him was enough reason for the police to do what it was that they did. You know, they basically shot Lil B in the back. You know what I'm saying? And that was their excuse. But the reason why this happened to Lil B is because the police knew not to play with Lil B at all. You know? Pluto two times. Um... Uh, there was a story that was told by uh, Rich Way Tiller. Shout out to Rich Way Tiller, who was very close to Pluto two times before he passed. Um, 
he was telling a story about them being on, you know, a rival gang's block. I think it was B-Gang. And the rival gang found out that they were having a party, you know, on their block or whatever. So the rival gang, you know, pulled up. When they pulled up, they was asking specifically for Pluto two times and Bino or Bully Bino. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, they part of that, you know, that ghost mob, uh, Richway 600 Alliance. They said they ain't care about nobody else, but they wanted them to. Um, allegedly, these were the guys that were involved in, you know, taking out a guy that went by the name of Itchy. So these guys pulling up, one, specifically these guys. Now, these guys are known in the streets, especially Pluto two times. His name was ringing so many bells. So it's like they ended up having to call the police to get these guys off their ass. You know what I'm saying? That was the only way they was going to make it out of there. And it was like, if it wasn't for them knowing how these guys got down, they probably wouldn't even came down there and fuck with them. They said, just make them two come out and everybody else straight. You know? Another example. Uh, shout out to Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, if any of y'all are familiar with a guy that was in Birmingham doing his thing, this probably was in about the early 2000s, late 90s, a guy that went by the name of Dangerfield. Now, Dangerfield was known in the streets to be a robber, man. Dangerfield was known in the streets to get busy. He was a robber. He was a killer. Uh, he was known for kidnapping people, holding people for ransom. Dangerfield did a lot. You know what I'm saying? And not only was the streets scared of Dangerfield, but once again, the police was scared of Dangerfield. Dangerfield had got into shootouts with the police. He had ran from the police. He had did all type of stuff in his day. So everybody knew not to play with Dangerfield. He um, came from the east side of Birmingham, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all get in the comment section, those who are familiar with this guy. Um, but this guy was a notorious robber, probably the biggest that I've ever heard about coming out of the city of Birmingham, Alabama. Um, well, this guy ended up getting into a shootout with a guy. And the guy that he got into a shootout with knew exactly who he was and knew how he was coming. So the guy didn't play with him at all. You know what I'm saying? Um, the guy ended up shooting him. Dangerfield could have actually lived if the police hadn't basically waited to him to, for him to bleed out. According to what I heard, and like I said, man, y'all that know this story, Birmingham, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Um, I've heard it from too many different, you know, Birmingham uh, um, residents to not know that this is the truth. This is this this is the story. Um, the police basically sat there and waited for Dangerfield to bleed out. They didn't call no ambulance or nothing. You know what I'm saying? And it was said that somebody pulled up, like, one police pulled up, like, man, you know, he can live, you know, call an ambulance. And, like, the chief or, um, or the sergeant or whoever was out there, was like, no, nah, man, let him sit there. Let him, let him sit there. Let, let that nigga die. They said that after he died, all of the big time police in the area, I'm talking about the lieutenants, the chiefs, uh, police coming from different of the outside suburb areas, different cities and stuff like that, were riding by, pulling up to the scene just to see his body to make sure he was dead. My right hand to God. Eccles was charged with murder in 2000, shooting death. But that charge was dismissed. Eccles was charged in the slaying of 32-year-old Rodney Duncan, who police said was responsible for a series of violent home invasions when he himself was gunned down in Irondale. A group of Birmingham homicide detectives were among onlookers at the crime that day in 2000. We wanted to go out there and confirm for ourselves that he was dead, said then Birmingham homicide detective Steve Young of Duncan. He's been a thorn in our side for a good while. We all want to make sure his demise was indeed a fact. This is the effect of a known killer. You know what I'm saying? This is why being a killer out here in these streets puts you at a disadvantage. Straight up. Real talk, y'all. Being a killer is not the thing to be. Ain't no money in there. Ain't nothing in there. But clout. 
But that same clout is what's going to end up getting your motherfucking muffin cap pushed back. Real talk. We need doctors. We need lawyers. We need um, uh, engineers. We need uh, uh, all type of different experts in different fields. But one thing we don't need no more of, man, in this world, man, is killers, especially coming out of our communities. It's your boy SNTV. I'm out.